1993, Governor Pete Wilson licensed a radioactive waste dump in Ward Valley, California. Some scientists say it could poison California's water. Wilson refuses to allow a full and fair public hearing on the facts. California is in danger of becoming America's nuclear garbage dump. What happened at Chernobyl could happen here in the sense that Chernobyl came about because nobody had the courage to ask the questions and get the answers. Nuclear matters seem to corrode democratic processes. And I believe that this particular situation of Ward Valley is proof positive that the democratic process has been corroded in the Department of Health Services and the Health and Welfare Agency. And the danger is that an extremely unsafe project could go forward without the facts having been found out. The Colorado River, a main source of drinking water for over 22 million people. LA and San Diego drink from it, so do Tucson and Phoenix, and much of northern Mexico. The Colorado's water also irrigates vast growing fields for tons of produce, shipped each year around the country and the world. What if this water were radioactive? Would you and your family still drink it? Would you still feed your children the produce? Six of the last eight years have been drought years. You might not have any choice. This proposed dump site is 13 miles from the Colorado River. If the dump leaks, and most of U.S. ecology dumps do leak, we will be putting radiated water on our crops, and we will be giving our children and our agricultural animals radiated water. There's no way to stop it. Now, it's insane. It's absolutely nuts. We, why have we gone through this whole thing of having children if we're giving them absolutely no shot at a future at all? Nuclear radiation is deadly to all living things. There is no safe level of exposure. Only one radioactive particle is needed to damage cells, genes, organs, and the immune system. Children are especially vulnerable to its effects. California's Governor Pete Wilson has licensed the opening of what many believe would become a national radioactive waste dump near the Colorado River in California's Ward Valley. The proposed site is on land sacred to Native American tribes. The Fort Mojaves, the Chimuaves, the Kachan, the Kokopaw, and the Colorado River Indian tribes. It's our belief that, you know, we were placed here to reside here, you know, to be caretakers of the land and the water. And it's not like we can pick up as a people and move. You know, we're, this is our home. I worry about my kids. Not only them, but, you know, I worry about uh, everybody else. You know, what is this really coming to? We are not the dumping lands of urban Los Angeles. We are not the dumping lands for the four compact states. That are want to that want to put the nuclear dump out here. We are a great people. We have pride. We have heritage. We claim this land as Aboriginal territory. If you look at the uranium cycle, from mining to milling to enriching to the disposal of waste, uranium and its products, radioactive waste, are killing Native people. It's an issue of genocide for us in many ways, because we can't afford any more lives. The loss of lives for radioactive waste. And I think what's real important in all of this discussion is to stop the manufacture of nuclear energy, arms, and waste. 
because we don't have a safe way to dispose of it. There cannot be a safe dose of radiation. As far as I am concerned, there can't be a safe threshold, and I think I've proved it to any reasonable human. Breast cancer epidemic is in large part due to this giant experiment that was carried out silently on the nation when all these reactors that were known to release radioactivity were allowed to operate while the government kept secret all its early studies that would have warned us about the seriousness of the small releases that we're getting from nuclear reactors and nuclear waste dumps and all the activities in the nuclear cycle. California says no to the no, 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 Citizens statewide are saying no to burying barrels of radioactive waste in unlined earthen trenches. Citizens are saying no to picking up the tab for the nuclear industry. Citizens are saying no to burying radioactive waste above a water table. Citizens are saying no, 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 radioactive waste dump in this state. California says no to the dump. Say no, no, Governor, listen up. California says no to the dump. No, no, no Governor, listen up. California says no to the dump. No, no, Governor, listen up. California says no to the dump. Wilson's targeted dump site is in the Mojave Desert near the river town of Needles on federal land under the jurisdiction of the U.S. Secretary of Interior. It also happens to be in the center of a critical habitat area for a 65 million year old endangered species, the desert tortoise. In just the last seven years, the tortoise has lost half its population through human destruction of its habitat. The contractor for California's proposed Ward Valley dump calls itself U.S. Ecology. U.S. Ecology has been sued by other states for leaving a trail of leaking dumps across America. This pattern is what worries us that you will get people who are paid to give you computer models that tell you very optimistically, don't worry, it'll be tens of thousands of years. And in every case where that's occurred in the past, particularly with this company, radioactive materials migrated within a couple of decades and they said, well, we made a mistake. Sheffield facility shut. <laughs> Contamination off site, extensive cleanup. Maxi Flats, contamination off site, shut. Now Superfund site, extensive cleanup. B, there were truck fires, there were leaking radioactive wastes, there was waste discovered buried off site. They broke into barrels year after year, took contaminated tools out, and sold them in the nearby town. Okay, Thousands of tons of nuclear waste, much of it deadly for millions of years, would be shipped on our highways for burial at Ward Valley in football field size pits in the sand. This dump too is designed to leak. They're not using any technology. You know. Uh, basically, with the 7,000 pages of research that they've done on this facility, they've come up with an unlined pit with no leak recovery system, no liners, and the only thing they're going to do, they've got some Vados monitoring that goes underneath the site that uh, is going to tell you, hey, it's leaked. I Roberts a press briefing to announce the completion of a new study by senior geologists at the U.S. Geological Survey on the safety of the proposed Ward Valley radioactive waste facility in the California desert. This independent study, conducted by respected geologists who are with us today, who have over 69 years of combined experience working for the USGS, concludes that U.S. Ecology, the firm tapped by Governor Wilson to run the dump, and the state of California have failed to prove that the Ward Valley site is suitable as a nuclear dump site. The enhanced study documents five possible hydraulic connections between the Ward Valley site and the Colorado River. This enhanced study also suggests the potential for radioactively contaminated soil to become airborne as dust 
that could pollute the aquifer that carries water from the Colorado River to Southern California's 17 million water users. And if you then expose the trenches themselves to erosion, you can get materials washing down into this stream, and it's a very fast track down to Danby Dry Lake. First flood that comes along is going to carry materials to Danby Dry Lake. Danby Dry Lake is a good wind fetch, uh, which means uh, the wind blows on it and thing, dust moves, and uh, radionuclides can be in very small particles, and it can be spread over large areas by that process. Some people think of the desert as dry and dead. It's neither. It's teeming with life and subject to extremes of hot and cold, dry and wet. It almost looks like the cover of a romance novel until you look closer. And you look at this picture and you say, what's wrong with this? What's wrong with it is that the woman has three breasts and the man has a foot growing out of his arm. That's a possible future depicted by Americans for a safe future, who are battling the governor's plan for a nuclear waste dump and using the billboard in that fight. I may decide it's tasteless and tacky, but <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Why would Pete Wilson and the interests he represent want to risk poisoning the Colorado River forever? While citizens are concerned about health and safety, the nuclear industry is concerned about profit. The Ward Valley dumping plan is a key piece of a larger picture. Fifty years of the atomic age has created billions of tons of nuclear waste. Less than 1% of it comes from biotech and medical research. 90% of it comes from nuclear power plants. It's waste so corrosive, there's no way to contain it for more than a few years at a time. Much of it stays deadly for longer than humans have been on Earth so far. The nuclear industry has a problem. No new reactors have been ordered in over a decade. Investors have fled. Diehards hope to revive their industry by demolishing worn-out reactors and building a new generation of reactors on the same sites with fast-track licensing that prevents democratic process. But where to put all that hot junk? Without cheap dumps, nukes, the next generation, will have a tough time being reborn. The hearing will come to order. All decisions about U.S. energy policy and subsidies funnel through powerful Louisiana Senator J. Bennett Johnston, the nuclear industry's point man in Congress. Johnston is chair of the key Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee. He's also Congress's top grossing receiver of nuclear industry campaign funds. Senator Johnston is banking on the nuclear industry revival. He's assisting a multinational consortium in citing a uranium enrichment plant to make more nuclear reactor fuel for the next generation. Johnston denies doing anything improper and confident that the plant will be built. Louisiana Energy says it will make a profit. But critics note the market is already glutted with uranium and that there is no place to dispose of the 4,200 tons of radioactive waste the plant would generate every year. In mid-1994, Senator Johnston authored a bill which would have forced the radioactive waste dump on California. Such attempts to override democratic and legal process at the state level remain a threat and are drawing sharp opposition from Californians. This truck carries a piece of the shutdown Yankee Row nuclear power plant in Massachusetts on its way to a leaking dump in Barnwell, South Carolina. The dump in Barnwell does not meet Massachusetts standards. It's a shallow landfill, it's unlined, which is what the NRC prefers in its guidelines so that the, radia the radiation can dissipate. It's and they found it in the aquifer underneath it that those people are drinking from. 
But this is a minority community. It's black people. It's Native Americans. And we need to go down there and tell them that we don't want this stuff to come to your community. We try to stop it. And we're sorry. And we're sorry that we can stop it and we feel terrible about it. And we're going to do everything that we can to let you know that and to stop future shipments. With over 25 nuclear plants scheduled for shutdown this decade, truckloads like this could become common on our highways. This is the kind of deadly, long-lived nuclear waste that could come to Ward Valley. Industry influence in Congress has resulted in laws like the so-called Low-Level Waste Policy Act. Its aim is to dump costs and liabilities for this waste from the industry onto state taxpayers. The problem is, is that the generators have subtly and not so subtly shifted the responsibility for disposing of stuff that they generate to the public. And it's being handed down from the federal government to the state government. All dumps leak. Online dumps leak sooner, but all dumps leak. You couldn't build a city dump online in California. A simple sanitary landfill could not be online in our state. But the nuclear industry has secured legislation that allows it to have much weaker standards than any other waste generator in the United States. The Ward Valley project is a dangerous project, is a way of relieving the nuclear industry of its responsibility, is a way of the corporatocracy functioning to protect itself, and then blaming it saying it's for you. You need it for your medical radionuclides. You need it to treat cancer patients. Well, I am a cancer doctor, and I don't need the Ward Valley dump. A statewide coalition of citizens groups has come together in opposition to the Ward Valley dumping plan and has shown the effectiveness of citizen action. Activists have used every democratic means available from lobbying to litigation to make long-term human responsibility, not short-term corporate profit, the basis for decision-making. The Ward Valley Coalition stopped a stealth move to open the dump in the last hours of the Bush administration. I'd like to say that today is a cautious victory for the desert tortoise and a temporary victory for environmental groups and a temporary victory for concerns about the responsible containment of radioactive waste. Concerned citizens agree that the only responsible policy is the use of state-of-the-art technologies to isolate radioactive materials from the environment. Long-lived radioactive waste must be contained in ways that make retrieval and repackaging possible. Short-lived waste must be separated and treated differently from the long-lived waste. Transport must be minimized. Like growing numbers of groups around the country and the world, the Ward Valley Coalition is fighting to have decisions made about radioactivity based on what is best for our environment and for all future generations. Everybody is going to need to take a stand on this. We need to hold all of our officials accountable. And in my heart, and I say this with no question, I know that we will stop this proposed radioactive waste dump in Ward Valley because we must. 